Hey guys, welcome to TST Garage. I'm Bart, and today in this video, I'll be showing you how to install the TST Industries brake light modulator on your bike. Now, a brake light modulator, sometimes called a strobe, sometimes called a brake light flasher, what it does is basically enables you to install some electronics on your bike so that when you press your brakes, the brake light flashes in some kind of pattern and alerts the drivers behind you that you will be stopping. Our particular brake light modulator comes pre-wired to a plug that interfaces with a sub-harness that we provide specific to your bike model that enables plug and play functionality with your bike. So that means that the installation is really fast and uh, you can do it yourself. Now the electronics inside, we do have the ability for you to program this unit to three different functions and then subsequently adjust the rate of the effect to your liking. Our first programmable mode is strobe alert. This mode will produce nine flashes and then stay solid for the duration of the brake engagement. Second one is intermittent pulser. Each cycle will flash 10 times and then pause. And then these cycles will repeat for the duration of the brake engagement. The last available option is pulser. And this one just basically provides continuous flashing for the duration of the brake engagement. Now we'll show you how to install this. It's really simple. And then after the installation chunk, I will show you in detail how to get inside here, how to program the different modes and how to alter the rate of those different modes. We did think about the safety of such devices during the design phase. So we decided to design this in a way that it will be a pass through component in case you experience a failure on board here it will just pass through your normal brake function, which means you press your brake, your brake light lights up, there's just no effect. In case you do experience that failure, we do offer a warranty, so we have guys standing by in our support department that will take your call, email, Facebook message, whatever, and we'll get you replaced. And that's pretty much it. Now, I'm really excited to show you guys just how easy this is to put on and configure. So let's get started. All right, as you can see here, we've already outfitted this beautiful XSR with our TST Industries Fender Eliminator and Echo LED signals. Now we're gonna complete the package by installing our brake light modulator. Let's begin by taking off the seat. Now we can access this compartment here. For ease, we'll have to remove these four eight millimeter head fasteners. This exposes our main taillight plug here. Just have to unroute some of these extra wires that are around. And I like to use a small flathead screwdriver to pry down on the tab that locks the male plug into the female. And now we will take the vehicle specific sub harness that comes with the modulator kit and plug it in. This basically just goes in series with the taillight circuit. It's keyed in such a way that there's only one way to plug it in. It has all the same connectors as the OEM components do. And now we're left with this four conductor connector here that plugs right into our modulator. And from this point forward is just a basically a game of tucking away wires and making sure we distribute our bulk properly. What I like to do is lay these components in this fashion. Have my large four conductor plug, three conductor plug, and my modulator. I always lay these modulators with the grommet side down so that water can't penetrate up through there. It is a rubber grommet, but it's always a chance that water can travel up. Now we can replace our bracket here. Just make sure that there's enough space here to hold this guy down. Up the rear portion of this bracket will actually hold it down and prevent it from moving around too much. We'll replace the fasteners. And now zap them down and give the system a quick test. All 
right, we're looking good. The modulator system does come with some zip ties. What I'm going to do is just use one of them to get my all these plugs and wires cinched together. This will just ensure that I have a nice neat package here and nothing is standing up away from the surface. You don't want to interfere with these bottom components of the seat. In this configuration, it will be safe and clear of any obstruction. That's pretty much it here. I'm just going to remove this excess, replace the seat, and this installation is complete. For mode selection and rate adjustment, we will need to get inside this capsule to access the electronics. These two Phillips head screws will need to be removed. What I like to do is unscrew them until they disengage from their receiving threads and leave them in the cap. Otherwise, it's pretty easy to lose them. If we pull them off with the cap, they are self-captive. All right, now we'll identify the parts here. This button is the mode selector and this potentiometer is your rate adjuster. Clockwise is faster, counterclockwise is slower. Let's first do our selection of modes. With the brake pressed, press the button once to toggle to the next available program. Now the brake does have to be pressed so that the unit powers up, otherwise you won't be able to make the selection. If you find that you've pressed the button, but the selection has not been changed, just do it again with the brake pressed. So now we will go on to the next program, press the brake once more, press the button once, and now you're in the next mode. Now we've switched twice, so pressing it one more time will return to the original mode that your unit arrived in. Now for rate adjustment, we'll be using the potentiometer with the brake pressed. We can turn it clockwise to make it go faster, counterclockwise to decrease the rate. Now in brake alert, you will only have nine flashes to make your adjustment and then it'll stay solid. This one doesn't actually lend itself to really fast flashing at the top of the range. Bottom of the range is unusable. So I like to set it somewhere towards three quarters to maybe 80% clockwise, and that does it for me. Now if we change to the next one, this one is the Pulsar, and this one just keeps on flashing, so I like to have it going pretty fast here. Choice is really up to you. If you wanna explore the next mode, we have the intermittent Pulsar, this one to me belongs somewhere close to the top of the range, makes it the most visible. But again, freedom means choice. The decision is ultimately up to you. Once you're done with your adjustment and you're where you wanna be with all your modes and rates, replace the cap, turn the screws back in, and it really is just that simple. Replace your brake light modulator in the space that you decided to keep it and you're good to go.